Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar today. Today we are going to be talking about um, race strateg week strategies for physical and mental strategies for a solid performance. Uh, this webinar will be done by Nicole Drummer. She is a neo-endurance sports and fitness coach. She is also USAT certified and USAC certified. My name is Kelly Bays. I am a, an account manager here at Training Peaks. I also have Tammy Saddle with me. She will be fielding any questions you guys have. So if you have any questions for Nicole or about Training Peaks during the webinar, go ahead and click on that questions box in your webinar window. It should be on the right side towards the bottom. That's where you can ask all the questions that you have. And if you have any questions for Nicole, we'll hold those for the end of the webinar and address as many as we can at the end. OK? And if at any time you can't hear either myself or Nicole, go ahead and send us a question in the questions box and let us know, because sometimes funny things happen with the audio. OK, I'm going to just start by showing you a training piece account. Uh, because Nicole will be talking a lot about preparing for your race. And if you have a lot of workouts and meals on your Training Peaks account, you can actually organize them as far as what is going to happen first during the day. So let's say today I'm not going to do hills until a different time of the day, or on Friday, or on Saturday. You can actually organize these things on the calendar. So all you do is you click on the workout, and on the right here, or on the left side of the quick view, you click and you drag to what time you're going to do that activity or eat that meal. And that will move the workout down. And maybe I'm going to do my run at night. That way it's a little bit more organized when you go to look at it. You can also upload files to your workouts. So if you have a doc or an Excel file that you use for training, you can do that by clicking on the hidden paper clip in the upper right-hand corner of your workout and click on Upload Attachment. So right now we're just going to conduct three polls, if you don't mind taking them. And then we'll get started with the webinar itself. Okay. All right, and we have one more poll after this one, and that's it. Okay, thanks guys. So now I'm going to turn it over to Nicole Drummer. And Thank you. Are we good to go, Kelly? We're good to go. There we go. All right. Thanks, Kelly. And thanks for everyone who could join us today. Um, I'm really glad to have the opportunity to share some of my uh, race strategies with you or my race week strategies. Uh, these are things that I found uh, that I've worked with uh, my athletes and for my own racing. And the reason why I want to uh, do this webinar, because we, we spent a lot of time focused on training. What was your workout? How did you do this? Um, you know, did you do hill repeats, or did you do sprint sets, or what did you do specifically training-wise to get ready for a race? So a lot of times, the things that we do during the race week can make or break uh, our event, or just not make it as good as it could have been. Um, so, uh, Kelly, go ahead and the next slide. We have uh, 
two goals uh, for this webinar. Um, so the, I want to provide you with a concept uh, of physical and mental strategies. So let me define what physical means. That's the stuff that deals with the training. Um, we've likely got a bunch of athletes of different disciplines here, so I'm not going to go specific into like what race week workouts should exactly look like, because that's going to depend on the sport and the type of event, you know, how long or short it is. But I will give you basic guidelines that should give you some, some, some a good structure uh, to follow. And the mental strategies has to do with everything that isn't really training. Um, it's all the, the little things, the soft things, things you may think about, the things that you may not think about as you get ready for your race. And again, I'm going to take the approach in this webinar that this is your, kind of your A race. It's your big race for the season. Um, we know you have a, might have a lot of sort of less important races and these strategies will still apply, um, but they're the most critical uh, in that, that big race, the one that you want to do uh, the best at in your race season. Uh, okay, Kelly? So the next thing is why the heck do you have race week strategies? Why, why should you have them? Why should you um, plan your race? beyond training, the specific training. Um, well, the first reason is to avoid as much negative stress. Uh, and what's negative stress is everything um, that can kind of kind of freak you out. It's, um, it's your life stress, work stress, you know, things you have to do um, in addition to getting ready for your race. Um, the more stressed you are, uh, the greater chance of a non-optimal performance. So we really want to to make sure that, that you're um, as relaxed so you can go into race into your race with as much of that positive energy as you can. And uh, race week strategies also allow us to handle the little glitches better. Um, I'll talk a lot about planning. And having plan, um, even if it, things don't go according to plan, which nothing ever does, uh, having something kind of Structured will allow you to handle those, those glitches better. When things don't go right, you'll be able to stay a lot more relaxed and, and, and take care of those and work through those. Um, and also, having race week strategies will help you avoid things that can really hinder your performance. Um, and it, if you go to the next slide, um, if you get anything from this webinar, uh, please, like this next slide, um, on what can hinder your race performance is uh, pretty pretty critical. So the first thing um, is is poor planning. Um, have you ever been late to the expo, to packet pickup, to the race start, to some place you had to be? You know how much stress that gives you. Um, I'm definitely one of those types that I like to be, you know, on time. And if I'm running late, it it you know my stress level goes through the roof. Um, so having having a plan helps me relax a little bit and know where I need to be. Um, another thing about poor planning would be missing key information about race details. Did something change that wasn't on the website? Um, is the last minute uh, issues, uh, last minute race course changes, um, the swim is going clockwise instead of counterclockwise, or they're changing a turn on the bike course. Um, if you miss some of that information, you're obviously not going to have the best race you can because maybe you'll, you'll go off course or you'll get someplace at the wrong time and that sort of thing. So definitely uh, having uh, poor planning during your race week can, can hinder your performance. Um, as well as uh, non-ideal race week nutrition. And you can see there's a picture there of a, um, that's a, a great burger and I actually enjoyed that burger after a race. but if I would have had that before a race, I wouldn't have done very well. I, my system can't handle that kind of thing. Um, so you don't want to go too far from your known uh, state. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, nutrition strategies. Uh, but also during race week, you know, nutrition is key. And you don't want to eat too much, but you don't want to eat too little. So being able to dial in what works for you is very, very critical um, during that, that week before your race. And then the final thing that can hinder your performance, and, and this one's probably the more obvious one um, to, to some people, is improper race week training. So if you do too much 
or too little, trying to go the distance is a common thing. We'll discuss that a little bit uh, on another slide. Um, but also not enough or too much rest. So not enough kind of makes sense, but too much rest, um, you could enter your race feeling sluggish. So you want to uh, dial that in. And again, everybody is going to be different. And so figuring out what works for you will be a trial and error thing. But knowing how much rest you need to, to get into that optimal race state is something uh, you can, can work on. OK, Kelly, next slide. So the first uh, topic is going to be physical strategies. Um, and I have this picture up, and I, and I kind of chose it for a reason. Um, I want to talk about it for a minute here. Is if you notice, um, the guy here, this is a, a triathlon here in Colorado Springs, and the athlete here is actually running barefoot. So we got, we got a couple options here. He either lost his shoes, forgot his shoes, um, or is actually a barefoot runner. Um, so I would hope that he didn't decide to become a barefoot runner on race day because this whole um, race is on concrete. Uh, but if he has trained this way, of course, he's going to be ready to race this way. So I'm going to now address sort of the, the physical strategies, knowing, you know, planning your, your, your training aspect, dialing in to race day. Okay, Kelly? All right. So the first physical strategy here is uh, sticking to your training plan. And you've probably heard this um, before, but it is, it is true. You want to do what is either in your plan um, that your, your coach gave you, or if you have a, a pre-built training plan, um, or if you're making your own training plan, use some of these guidelines uh, to create your plan for race week. Um, the, the idea in terms of training for a race week is going to be uh, a taper. Usually your A race, you will have a taper. It might be one week, it might be two, it might be three weeks, um, however long it is. But uh, this last, last week before, you know, stick to that plan. You're going to have often reduced volume and more rest days. Um, your workouts will be short, but they'll also include race intensity. Um, I mentioned this before. But don't add extra workouts just to be sure. I think I've talked to people, you know, they're getting ready to do an Ironman and it's a week out and they think, should I go for another three-hour run? Probably not. You don't want to do the distance just to be sure. You need to trust your training. And there's a, there's a saying that 10% undertrained is better than 1% overtrained. And that is, um, that's very true. Um, you know, be more rested going into a race, you're likely to perform better than if you push yourself too hard and you just can't take the effort that you're trying to give it. Um, however, occasionally during uh, our taper weeks, and some people, um, you can call it like your legs get dead legs, or even mentally you get like taper madness, where you're just going crazy because your volume has been uh, pretty drastically reduced. Um, depending on what you're, you're training for. And then you just feel like, you know, you don't feel like, you know, you can sit any longer, that you have to go do something. And that's okay. Uh, if, if you do have to do something sort of outside your training plan, just do basic what you would call active recovery. Go take a walk or spin on your trainer or take a, uh, do some yoga classes or stretching. Just do something really light that's not going to uh, impact your recovery, but it'll help your your blood get flowing a little bit, and it'll help you feel better. Um, so short, easy, like active recovery workouts during race week, if you absolutely have to do something outside of your plan, um, keep, it, keep it to that, and that'll help you, help you feel better if you suffer some of those, those symptoms. Um, up in the corner, I put an image of uh, my actual uh, race week um, from the 2011 uh, Ironman Arizona. Um, and you can see by the color codes in, in Training Peak, um, I kind of didn't stick to it, but I did it in, in the um, for reverse. I didn't do more than what was on my plan. I actually did a little bit less. So I, that first day, that was a, a master swim. 
I completely skipped it because I didn't want to get up at 5 in the morning. I felt like I needed some extra sleep. So I just decided, you know what, I'm not swimming today. Next day, I got my workout in as planned. The following day, there was another swim. Instead of getting up at 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock to go drive all the way across town to the master's program, I just swam for 30 minutes at a, a closer pool. And then another day, it's green, great. I did just was on there, had a rest day. And then I kind of shortened my day before the race um, training just a little bit. I think I had 90 minutes planned, and I did like an hour um, just to get something in. So, so I came close to the plan, but I definitely didn't didn't go above and beyond that. And actually, just I nailed my goal times for for the race, and so I was uh, probably as, as rested as I could be, and, and it worked uh, really well for me because uh, I hit my target times for for all the three sports. Um, okay, Kelly, next slide. All right, so another topic of uh, physical strategies is uh, uh, when not training rest, okay? Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in your life. You can, um, you know, a lot of us are working full time. We have families. We have other obligations. And then sometimes when we're not training, we might, go to those other obligations, but if you if you can sneak in another nap, do it. Um, if you can stay off your feet during that week, especially as you're getting closer to the race itself, do it. Um, use that extra free time to rest even more. Um, you know, do your workouts that are on your plan, but then get as much rest as you can. And then also use that time to, to work on your race plan. And we'll talk about race plans here in a minute. But that's that's great time if you have an extra hour that you normally would be uh, riding your bike. Um, get out the uh, pen and paper, or your computer, and start uh, typing up uh, your your race plan. Uh, and that way, it'll it'll it's positive things going towards your race. Another thing uh, during the the week is don't do anything new. Um, and this is. It including physical activities. So I have on there skip the trip to the rock climbing gym. Again, if you have like free time and your friends have always been wanting you to, to go try the new gym and, and check it out with them, the week of the race is probably not the best time. If you do something new, you don't know how your body's going to respond and you just don't want to be sore in um, strange places when you're used to, to, to split time, it might be okay. but. You know, it's kind of an example of, you know, just don't, don't do anything completely out of the ordinary so that your body is actually prepared to do your sport and your race. Um, the, the phrase, nothing new on race day, is true. It's um, try everything in training. Um, make sure it works for you and, and try and try and test and tweak and do whatever you can. Um, because you want to know what works for you on race day. And then also have a tested pre-race training plan. Um, and again, that's like that week before the race and even the, the day before the race or maybe two days before the race. So some people do better taking the day off completely before the race. But some people prefer two days before the race and then doing like a race prep workout the day before. Um, so figure out what works for you. Um, this is going to be certainly sport specific and distance specific on what your workouts will be. Um, you know, longer races like a 24 hour cycling event is going to need, you probably can rest a lot more um, and you want to rest a lot more the days coming up to the race because you don't, you don't want your legs to be as fresh as possible. Whereas a sprint try, you might have a little bit more uh, things going on and some higher intensity short workouts to get that. Uh, get that body acclimated to, to going fast again. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, listen to uh, Tracy Mosley, who is a uh, British uh, world champion, a downhill uh, mountain biker, and she was very uh, specific. On She had certain race warm-ups that she did every time before every race, and she got on the trainer, and she did you know the same thing before each race because she knew that that's what worked for her. So if you're new to racing, it's going to take a while, um, several seasons, lots of races to figure out what works best for you. Uh, but definitely figure something out so that 
you have that pre-race training plan so you know you can go into the race and your body is, is ready to go. Um, so along those lines of don't do anything new, it's true with nutrition. So I, I recommend people eat it like they normally eat. So if you if your body is used to certain foods, then it's used to certain foods. And if you eat things before your training runs and your training rides and your swims, do the same thing. Don't don't change things up too much um, because you're adding another change to your body. So you're adding additional stress to your body if you change things too much. Um, if you go to the expo and they have a whole bunch of snacks, you skip those, grab them, take them for later, unless it's something that you eat all the time and you know you can eat it. Like I was at the LA Marathon and I was hungry. I was at the expo, but they had Cliff Bars. And I eat Cliff Bars all the time. So I ate some Cliff Bars because I was hungry. It was a nice little buffet for me. Um, but know what you can eat and don't go sampling because you don't want the one thing that doesn't agree with you or you didn't know it had an ingredient that you were allergic to in it. And then now your race day is compromised because of uh, uh, unfortunate circumstances. Um, and uh, my last point here is about cargo loading. So again, only do it if you've tested this protocol. Like personally, I don't carbo load. Um, I might kind of eat a little bit more of the bread like before the race, but I don't like have a protocol for me. But if you do that, test it out in training. Don't think, oh, I've got a race, so I'm going to eat three bowls of pasta, because that might not sit too well. Um, I know a guy who had like, it was a pasta dinner, and he had a lot of lasagna the night before marathon, and he was just eating it and loading it up. I'm like, you're not going to feel good tomorrow. And sure enough, like after the race, he didn't feel so good. So know, um, know what your body can handle and, and, and try it out in training. Um, so that picture in the upper in the corner on the slide is actually my pre-race meal. Sometimes I'll have like a few vegetables uh, with that. In this case, I think they serve asparagus, and well, I just you know what asparagus can gonna do. So I skipped it and I just went for the salmon and the brown rice, and that's pretty much the night before every single race that I have. I have that. It sits well. It's light. We've got carbohydrates and protein, um, so it works really well. So. Find that pre-race meal and that those meals that work for you so that you can uh, kind of nail the nutrition side as well. And again, a lot of it is all, it, it's reading a bunch of stuff and figuring things out, but it's trial and error for you and what works for you and the kind of races that you're doing. All right, Kelly, you can go to the next slide. All right, so that's the basics of the, the physical strategies. So now I'm going to move on uh, to the mental strategy side of things. Um, again, I have this picture here kind of for a reason. Um, it's a transition area of effects of that same triathlon with the, the guy from that was running barefoot. Um, but what we can see here is different ways that people set up their transition. And so they hopefully set this up in a way that makes the most sense for them but the reason why it's different is hopefully they actually thought about what they were going to do so they can move calm but quickly. So it sort of represents um, the mental preparation of a triathlete, you know, one small aspect of it. But if you look at thinking through something and planning ahead so that you can be calm in that situation, that's the mental preparation for, for any kind of race, whether it is running race, cycling race, or triathlon or swimming. Uh, whatever it might be, um, you know that that thinking through ahead of time so that you're calm in the situation and so that you can put all your energy into the physical side, you can relax that mental side a little bit. All right, next slide, Kelly. So the biggest thing for me in mental strategies, and the thing I stress the most. Uh, with, with athletes that I coach, and, and for me, personally, I just find that helps so much, is to have a race plan. And it's very detailed. There's a lot of information in here. Um, the bigger the race, the longer the race, the farther that you're going to have to travel from home, the bigger this sort of this plan, this document is going to be, but the more it will help you because it's sort of a everything you need to know about your race 
and what you've thought through of how you want to perform is in this in this plan. And so it's there to guide you. And as you do races throughout the season and throughout the years, you can go back and see what worked for you and what didn't. So it's always a um, it's not finished before your race. It's actually finished after your race. It kind of turns into a bit of that race report. But you can go through and you can see, okay, what did I plan? What worked? What didn't go according to plan? Maybe something worked better that didn't go according to plan or it didn't work at all when it didn't go according to plan and you go, oh, I know why because I only had one bottle on this 56-mile uh, bike ride, and I needed to drink like three bottles of water or fluid. Um, so things like that. That's why having this plan is, is, is very, very critical. Um, the first part is just logistics of, of your race week. So you'll go through and you'll figure out um, where am I going. And you know, get all the hotel information if you're, if you're not staying at home. Um, print out the directions on how to get to all the places that you need to be and where you need to be. Think about where you're going to eat and what you're going to eat. If you're out of town and you're not at home, do you need to take any food with you? Do you need to have um, you know, special things? Or you know, are there going to be restaurants nearby that, that are your, in your sort of known safe list of places to eat? Because you hate to go to a place and all it has is like McDonald's um, and you, you don't eat there. you know. So figure out all those little things about where you're going to be and what you're going to do um, in terms of, of your travel um, and, and your you know, flight information, rental cars, how you're getting your bike there if you're, if you're bringing a bike. Um, put all that information together. Um, and then think about then as you get closer to like, the event itself, which usually you can find on the event website, is where you have to be and when. You know, do you have to be somewhere uh, for a packet pickup? Um, what are the times? You know, when does it close? When is the expo? You know, what do you have to do in order to successfully enter the race? You know, if you is packet pickup only on Friday night when the race is Saturday? Is it, if it's not on race morning, can you get there Friday night? Um, knowing ahead of time, you know, or if you can't, can you make arrangements with the race director and let them know you have these other circumstances? So knowing ahead of time um, in, in advance of what you're going to do um, will help you out quite a bit. Um, when you're at the expo, again, don't stay too long. Um, if they're outside, you're out in the sun, you can get sunburned pretty badly if you forget your sunscreen. Um, you're on your feet a lot, and you don't want to be on your feet. And so sort of plan your time. You know, know how long that you're going to stay at the expo um, and what you're going to do there um, if they're if there is an expo. I mean, I have a personal experience of a half Ironman that I did, and it was, it was the, the Kansas 70.3. And coming from Colorado, we had a very cool spring, and this was an early summer race. So my, I wasn't acclimated to, to the heat at all. And I grew up in Florida, so I don't mind the heat and humidity, but my body wasn't used to it. And I did my pre-race workout, and I went to the expo, and I – I drank water, but I was sweating buckets, and I didn't drink any electrolytes. And so I, I kind of sabotaged my race from the day before the race because I didn't think through things that I would need um, for to take care of myself the day before the race during the race. So, uh, you know, when I look back and I see the pictures of how sweaty I was at the expo, I was like, wow, and I was just drinking plain water. I probably should have had some more electrolytes that day would have helped me race a little bit better. Um, those those kind of things. You know, don't stay too long. Get out of the heat. Stay cool um, if you can. Um, the next point on this slide is social plan. And this um, is something we don't often think about. But like if our family or friends are with us at a race, um, especially, that, again, this is the point of your A race here. So, you know, this is the most important race of your season. Schedule your social plans ahead of time of what will fit into your schedule, but don't let them convince you to go out late if you if that's not in your plan. Don't let them uh, 
you know, stay up too late if, if you're sharing a room with, with other family members and they want to stay up and watch TV, let them know that, hey, lights out at 9 o'clock um, because I need to do this for the race. You can be a little selfish for, for this race. Um, hopefully they understand how much work you put into training. And so schedule those, those things. You, know, you don't want to, obviously, you know that they're going to be there. Um, you know, enjoy your time with them, but, but plan it out so that you're not doing anything that, that you don't want to be doing or you're not staying up too late. Um, let them know it's your race and, and be a little bit selfish for it. Um, another part of the you know, logistics for, for race week that will go into this first part of the plan will be all your pre-race pre workouts. So way back on that slide when I had my uh, Ironman race week training plan, I would know, I would figure out when I would do those. Uh, and fit those in the plan. So as, as Kelly showed us earlier, you can actually do that in training peaks by scheduling time. You can even create, you know, other things as, as sort of on the calendar. So like an, a custom workout or another workout, you can put, you know, go to go to expo or, you know, put your dinner time on there and schedule your meals and stuff. You can actually have like a full day scheduled in, in training peaks. You can use that um, as well. Another uh, key thing here, is, is knowing your race course. Uh, hopefully you've, you've learned it ahead of time and so you're training appropriately for that course. Um, but when you're out there, you know, get out there and plan some time to, to review the course and make sure it is what you think it is um, and, and get to know that. And then also sleep time. Again, I schedule that like, you know, 9.30 lights out or whatever time it's going to be because you know you need a lot of rest. You need to get extra rest. You need to make sure your body's nice and recovered. So, so plan that sleep time in, and it'll actually help you out quite a bit so you won't get caught up in some other things that are going on you know, when you need to go to bed. Okay, Kelly, next slide. All right. So that was the first part of your race week is your sort of the logistics leading up. So everything before race day. And then you have part two, which is your actual race day planning, your your race plan. Um, and things that go in, in this part of the plan will be um, your schedule for race day. What time do you need to get up? When do you need to eat? Um, what time do you have to leave for the race? Is it like a lot of the races here that just have like one entrance into the reservoir? And so when you're getting there, there's a thousand other cars trying to get there all at the same time. And so you know, account for that, account for traffic, everything, you know, going, you know, how are you going to you know, get your bike to wherever you need to be or pack your shoes in the car or whatever you need. Um, plan that out. Uh, plan your warm-up. Make sure, again, this is like a tried and true warm-up. So have your, uh, your race morning routine uh, written out for you. Um, I've got a kind of specific one, and I know like when I'm going to take uh, in my like nutrition, you know, X number of minutes before the the race start, and so I kind of work backwards. And say, okay, if my weight starts at this time, I have to eat at this time. I need to be done with my warm up at this time, and I work it all in there so I make sure it fits, which also helps tell me like when I need to get to the race itself. You know, when when can you get to the race course? If it's a triathlon, you know, when is the transition open? When is parking open? Um, and all those things, you know, know those for that day. And then you can go into, like, your race specific details. And this is, you know, walk through your race from the gun, from, you know, your warm-up, to then the gun goes off, and then what are you going to be thinking? What are you going to be eating? How are you going to pace yourself through every little bit of the race? Um, this is also where you can put in like your goals for the race. Do you have a target time that you want to hit? Um, or a target power output maybe if you're on the bike. Um, where kind of that goal thing and you you know, okay, say if I'm feeling really good, I hope to hit this little bit higher goal. I think based on my training, this this goal here is super achievable, but I'd be definitely be satisfied with, you know, something else. You know, kind of put those things in there and just kinda Make sure that, that what you're gonna, how you're gonna pace yourself is actually realistic for your training. Um, and then, 
you know, are you going to go out hard or are you going to hold back? You know, things like that. You know, no, it's, it's your race, so you're planning for it. So make sure that you have a good idea of how you're going to attack the race. And then we always have to think of contingency plans. Okay, these are the, you can't think of every single contingency plan, but some of them uh, are common things can go wrong. How are you going to handle them? If you've thought through them in your plan, you will, if they actually happen, you will get through them much more calmly and you will be able to actually enjoy um, the race. So things like getting a flat tire. Do you know how to change a flat? Or do you rely on, you know, is it like a crit where they have extra wheels for you? So you're just going to rely on the, on the extra wheel. Um, do you have any specific, like, nutritional issues? Maybe you're still trying to dial things in and you're susceptible to some GI distress. What are you going to do if that should arise? You know, what's your plan to uh, get through that? Um, and then do you have any uh, injuries? Well, a lot of people have IT band issues. And so on the run, things can, not, can flare up. So what are you going to do? Do you have like a stretching plan that you're going to do? When these things happen, if you know that they are, there's a possibility that something can occur, know what you're going to do in that situation. Um, I'll use another example uh, from for me, just this last, in, in this Ironman, I actually dropped all my electrolytes like on, after the first lap of the bike. So I still had, you know, two more laps to go on the bike, and I didn't have my electrolytes with me. So I had some options here to, you know, rely on things on the course, and then, but I hadn't trained with some of those. Um, so I had to make, you know, calculate decisions if I grab this bottle of, um, sports drink, you know, is it going to sit well with me? I don't know. How do I feel? But I wasn't, it didn't stress me out. And I knew that when I got on the run, I had electrolytes in my special needs bag, and I could just kind of pile them on and eat a lot of pretzels on the run. And so I did, you know, that worked for me. And so I was able to, to not freak out, I guess, about something that, that could be very, very stressful in, in that kind of situation when you have a long day ahead of you. Um, I just kind of dealt with it and went with it and it worked, worked out for me. Um, another, uh, one of these pictures here you can see it's just kind of a, the weather is another contingency plan if you're in an area where there, you know that there's potential for storms. And in this case, this was a, a triathlon that got turned into a duathlon because it rained and the water was like, the air temperature was 37 degrees, so it's not safe. So. You know, accepting those kind of things and turning it into a positive and, and having your, your bike and your run. I guess uh, the New Orleans 70.3 just was turned into a duathlon as well, right? If those things could happen, know that they could happen and accept them and don't let that stress uh, get in the way of your successful race. All right. Kelly, next slide. So now I'm going to show you a few examples of plans. Um, and the first one here is from one of my athletes. Um, she did a 135-kilometer road race uh, out in France. Um, and it's actually a hilly course. So part of her plan was you know, she went on the, the, the website, but the race website, and looked to see you know, what those climbs are. So she had the list of them. She knew where in the race they would take place. She knew how how long they were and how much elevation gain that they were. So she could figure out, you know, how she was going to pace each one and and where they fell within in that uh, basically in that like almost a century ride. Um, so those kind of things, are, you know, very critical to, to going into a, into a race plan if you want this race uh, to be your best. Um, she also looked at her competition and said, okay, who, who also is racing? Who am I going up against? Um, you know, sometimes having, you know, knowing who your competition is, you know, can certainly add a little, a little bit of fear. You know, you size them up, ooh, I know that they're fast. I know they're strong on this kind of course. But it also can push you a little bit harder, saying, I know that they're good, but I'm just as good. Um, 
So put that kind of information uh, in your plan so that you can, you know, again, mentally you're prepared for what's going to happen that day. And then also on the, the sort of the last part that you can see on the screen is that um, I told her to get some keywords, and we'll talk about this in a second, um, you know, ha having a mantra. So she, hers were, you know, I'm strong, I can do this or I will enter the pain cave and it's okay, I'm happy. You know, I'm doing this on purpose. Like I I know this pain, I understand this pain. It's nothing new, I can push through it. Um, you know, just mentally having things in your head that's gonna push you through some of the the, the, the tough times, you know, on on your during your race, you know, when your body is kind of like protesting a little bit, saying, Hey, what are you doing to me? And you're like, No, you can go fast because I know you've done it in training, so we're gonna do it. Um, you know, have those things kind of in, in your mind. Um, and then, all right, Kelly, if you go to the next one, we've got another example here. And this one is actually uh, one of my race plans. Um, it was a local race. And so it didn't require, um, you know, much of the travel logistics. Basically, I, I needed to make sure I knew how to get from one part of town to the other part of town. Um, but it was a, a dual race day, and the, the part that I have um, kind of captured here is, is day, day number two. So you can kind of see at the top where I have my packing list, so I made a list of things that I need to bring, which is should always go in your plan. You know, what everything that you think you would need, write it down so that you have it with you and you're ready to go. Um, I was hoping to be in bed by 10 o'clock, Again, I didn't, I didn't have to wake up until 6.30. Um, I had my nutrition written down, make sure I have everything. I knew when I was going to leave the house, about what time I would get to where I needed to park. And I had to ride up to the race site, you know, because the parking was, was a little bit away. There was just a time trial. I knew my start time for the time trial. So I knew when I was going to take that, uh, that gel about 15 minutes before my start time, so I was ready to go. Um, and then I have my, my pacing strategy. So this is a real short, it's a 3.1 mile, but it's a 1,300 foot elevation gain. You can kind of see the elevation profile. I, I, I put the little uh, data uh, image on there too. So this is not, this is a real steep climb. So I had to pace myself specifically. So I needed to say, okay, I'm gonna try to spin, but how much can you spin on something that's really steep? But if I can, I'm gonna do it. I had a power goal, where I want to keep my watch. I knew if I went too much above 220, yeah, I would kind of burn my legs out. Um, mile two, it gets really hilly. And if you kind of see, I don't know if you can see on the, on the graph there, but, you know, my cadence dropped quite a bit because that's where these really steep switchbacks. Um, so that's why I put mile two, hammer, get out of the saddle if I can, just, just keep going. And then it kind of levels out again, kind of, it's not ever level. And mile three, so again, get making sure my walks are right back in. And then when I need that last little bit, when I was headed towards the end of the course, just just leave it out, all out there, and then and then go. So I had all that written down. It's a short, you know, it's a short race, but mentally I I prepared myself with my strategy, so I knew when I got there what I was going to do. And of course, at the end, if I had anything left, I would leave it all there. So that's what you guys need to do. Like think about. What your what your race is, how are you going to plan it out, and think through it because once you do that and write it all down, you'd be surprised like how much more enjoyable your races actually can be. Um, and then I also had a, um, a a workout after this time trial, so I had to schedule that in as well, like where I was going to go because I needed to do um, I need to go go for a run, so I had that in my race plan as well. Um, so it's all, you know, I try to write as much as possible. I try to get as much detail as possible into my plan because that will help me with this next uh, item that I'm going to talk to you about. So if Kelly goes to the next slide, we'll see it. And it is visualization. And it's not a new concept. A lot of it's in sports psychology. And I'm sure that you've heard, heard of visualization before. Um, but it works. It, it, it really does. It really helps take a lot of that stress off your race because you've essentially put yourself through it before. 
So you've written your plan. So now you're going to think through all of the aspects of the race. And then usually from like warm up or race morning, you don't need to visualize the um, like driving to the race site. So just just race race day act, actual stuff. So like when the gun goes off, boom. Think about it. You know, how are you going to feel? How are you going to pace yourself? But think through your mantras now. You know, what are you associating with with um, your your swim? You know, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Or um, you know, what are you going to say to yourself to push yourself? Like like we had in that one training plan. Like I am strong. Um, think about the potential those potential gotchas. You know, your contingency plan. You know, just think, visualize yourself fixing a flat on the side of the road. You know, if you're having to repair your own flat, picture yourself doing it. Now, hopefully you've practiced it as well. But also, you know, visualize doing all these all these things that, you know, kind of your known issues that may come up. If you visualize yourself getting through them, if they do come up, you will handle them so much better. And then you'll be able to get through your right. Um, you know, whatever whatever mantra or cue that works is a favorite of mine that I think to myself is that you, you guys seen that animated cartoon that's peanut butter jelly time. I mean, it's hilarious, right? The dancing banana. But that puts me mentally in, like, an awesome state. So when I'm, like, if I'm on my bike or running, like, I'm just going. It makes me feel really good. And so because it's just a hilarious little song, and it works for me. So find what works for you. And also, one of the most important things to visualize is a successful finish. Okay, if you can find a finish line, if they set it up before the event, go there. Walk through it, ride through it, whatever you can do, see it. Picture yourself going through that finish line. And actually, if you can walk through it, do it. Because then you will put yourself in that really positive situation that you're going to finish your event, you're going you're gonna to finish with, you know, your goal time or even better, and this is really helping your, your mind associate your body with what you're going to be doing the next day. Um, it seems a little, it might seem a little silly, but it seems, it seems to work, you know, because when you come down that finish chute or you hit that finish line and you've already pictured yourself, it just, it just lets you go a little bit harder even, go a little bit faster. It just it seems to work. Um, and then during your, you know, your race week, find quiet time to do this, to visualize. Um, you know, right before bed sometimes, like while you're winding down for the evening, or if you do have a few minutes, like 20, 30 minutes to yourself, go ahead, um, visualize your race plan. So you've written it, you've thought through it, now you're visualizing your race, and, you know, you'll be ready to go come race day. All right, Kelly, next slide. So that's pretty much as much as I can, you know, kind of briefly talk about. There's there's so much information that, that we could go over and we can't really fit it into, um, you know, a 45-minute kind of presentation. But it, break it up, break these strategies up into two things, right? Physical strategies to make sure your body is ready. Trust your training and stick to your known safes. What works for you, stick to it. Okay, and then your mental strategies are going to make sure that your mind is ready to race. Have that plan, and that, that's critical. Have the plan, because then when your mind is ready, the body will be even more ready. So I just want to say good luck to everybody, and have a great race season. And then there's one more slide here to wrap up before we potentially take some questions. Um, I've got some additional resources up here for you. So my website, uh, email address, I'm on Twitter. Um, if you go to my website, you should also be able to find, I have a link to my Facebook page. So, you know, find me, email me, um, tweet me, whatever. You can, uh, if you have any questions, you know, from, from today that you, that, you know, didn't get answered or anything like that, yeah, just drop me, drop me an email. I'll be glad to get back with you. Um, to answer those questions. And I also want to point out that I do have, um, for the triathletes, more specific to the triathletes, even though I think it would be useful for um, 
for like uh, other events, uh, really the triathlete's guide to race week goes into uh, what we talked about today, but in a lot more detail, kind of real specific kind of things to do and things to think about specifically for triathlon. So I have an ebook there, and then also have uh, how to write a triathlon race plan, where it walks you through things to put in in your plan. Um, and that one, even though it is triathlon, other sports you could modify it, you could take it, and you could kind of adapt it to your specific sports because the basic content is going to be similar and, and it's some of the stuff that we talked about today. Um, and then there's a coupon code if you if you do uh, want to think about getting those. Like, there's a coupon uh, code so it can give you 50% off kind of to thank you for uh, listening in on this webinar today. And so with that, if I can hand it back to you, Kelly, for maybe some questions. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, we're going to take some questions from people that have asked. Um, the first question, Nicole, is other than TSB, is there any other way you can quant quantify that you either have done too much or too little training? I was thinking more about the week of the race. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually quantify um, how like rested you are. I think again, that's the you just you need to look at what race, you know things that you've done in the past and how it's worked for you, but then just how your body feels. I think so. That's more the not the 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 quantitative, but the, the qualitative. Like, do my legs feel sluggish or am I extremely tired. Um, those keys, I think sometimes during race week, might even be more important than than your exact training stress balance. So you can use the, the TSB and, and the performance management charts are fabulous for, for making sure that you're in a good place and then making going back and making a note and say, okay, at this point in time, I didn't feel very well and, and here's before this race, and I felt great before this race. Um, but there's also so many variables that go into like how you feel. You know, maybe you're about to catch a cold or something, so you feel worse and you need more rest. There's a whole lot of other things. Um, so use the use the TSB as like you know your 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 general guideline for if you're quantifying your your training that way. But then during race week, go by go by how you feel. You know, if you have a lot of zip in your legs, you know, you're doing great, you know, and maybe do a couple extra, you know, short, very short intervals to, to, to keep it. Or if you're feeling sluggish, just get in some active recovery um, and, and do it that way. So that's probably the best answer I can give right now for that one. Great. That was good. Thank you, Nicole. Um, another question we have is, in the weeks before the race, how much load do you recommend? Is it a good time to do as much as possible? Okay, um, and that is, the, you know, one that depends on what race you're doing, so the distance, duration, and intensity of the race. And it also depends on how much load that your body can handle. Um, because some people, you have to ease into volume. And so if your body can't handle a lot of intensity, then it's not a good idea. Um, how fast do you recover in learning um, what you need to actually get yourself into that, that rested state? So I wouldn't recommend as much as possible, um, but in the sense of you want to do as much as possible that will allow you to go into the race with the most recovery and the best fitness level. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example that you saw the, the, the race plan from that time trial I did. That was day two. Day one before that was a crit. And so it was a real high intensity. My heart rate was maxed out. Um, I was training for Ironman. So all my stuff, so I was, you know, just adding volume. It was a lot of volume base, maybe a few kind of tempo intervals, but, but mostly just, just volume. So I throw in, in these two races, because they were local, it was the USA Pro Cycling Challenge event. I wanted to have some fun with that, and I pushed myself really hard. It took me over a week to recover from that. And so had I had another event, you know, I had to be really careful about what was going on. 
So you really have to learn how your body responds to specific training modes so that you can get the recovery that you need. Some people can, can put in a lot of volume and a lot of intensity and recover very quickly. Others need a lot of downtime before their body will bounce back and, and be able to get that intensity again. So it really just depends. Great. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, we have one more question, and um, then we'll start wrapping up because it's approaching 2 o'clock here. Uh, so pacing strategy on the bike. Do you place a note on the top tube? You can. I personally don't um, because I, I knew where I needed to be, and I had trained in a specific place for so long. But um, that is a great way to put reminders, is taping things on the top tube, even taping, like, uh, not only your pacing strategy and like where you need to be, um, or you can tape on like like where the climbs show up. If you know if you're doing a race that has hilly climbs, you can. It's hard to remember where six different hills might be, but you can write them down, and so you know at what distance when they're going to show up. Um, and you can also write like your mantras on there so that you have that visual cue to start thinking positive thoughts um, when you're out there. So I definitely recommend, um, if you've got room on that top seat, to, to take advantage of it. Great. Thank you, Nicole. So right before we wrap up here, I just want to show you guys, if you do have any questions about how to do a lot of the stuff that Nicole talked about in Training Peaks, please go to Training Peaks and then click on Support in the upper left-hand corner. And this is our support center. And you can browse through Personal Edition or Coach Edition and find a lot of information that you need. And if you can't find the information, you can send us a support ticket by clicking on the Contact Us link. So um, thanks to everyone who attended, and thank you, Nicole, uh, and great job. And thank you. If you want, yeah, and if you want to sign up for more webinars, we do have that listed in our support center as well. And that is under Personal Edition or Coach Edition, and then click on Webinar Schedule. So thanks again, everyone, and have a good day.